follow us on facebook and instagram and do subscribe our youtube and telegram channels now let's start our discussion welcome to english lecture notes today we will discuss 29 pilgrims in canterbury tales first pilgrim is the knight Knight is the first pilgrim Chaucer describes in the general prologue. Knight has fought in many battles, everyone respect him. He is a person filled with humanity. He is the representative of chivalry, adventure. Knight has participated no less than 15 crusades of the era. The knight has battled the Muslims in Egypt, Spain, Turkey and the Russian Orthodox in Lithuania and Russia. He has also fought in many moral wars. Knight has led a very busy life as his fighting career. He is the very essence of chivalry, honor, and courage. He wears modest clothes, which is stained with rust. He doesn't show his social status or boast about his position. Next pilgrim is the squire. Squire is the second pilgrim described in the general prologue. The squire is the son of the knight. He hopes to become a knight like his father. He is a young man with many youthful follies. He is of high social status. He wears fine clothes and is vain about his appearance. The squire is being trained in both the arts of battle and the arts of courtly love. He is a young member of 20 years old. The author illustrates squire's youth as fresh as is the month of May. The dress of the squire is colorful, embroidered with flowers, shot with large sleeves. He can sing, write poetry, and ride a horse very well, and considers himself a ladies man. The Human Human is an unhappy person. His work has ruined him physically and financially. He is the servant who accompanies the knight and the squire. The narrator mentions that his dress and weapons suggest he may be a forester. His weaponry includes a bow, arrows and a sword. This guy is dressed all in green. The Prioress The first woman to be introduced is the Prioress. Her given name is Madame Eglantine. She is also the first religious figure discussed in the book. In prologue to Canterbury Tales, the prioress offers a hymn of praise to the Virgin Mary. She is described as imitating the manners of the royal court. She attempts to transcend her social boundaries by imitating the social aristocracy. She wears a golden brooch with the words, Amor wins at omnia, or, Love conquers all. She has traveled all over the world. She has lived with five husbands. Her dress shows her extravagance. Next, the nun. The second nun is not described in the general prologue, but she tells a saint's life for her tale. The nun's priest. Like the second nun, the nun's priest is not described in the general prologue. He tells the story of Chantikali. Next, the monk. This monk cares little for the rule of his position. He shows his devotion to hunting and eating. He is rebellious. Monks usually wear plain habits with hoods. This monk has grey fur on the sleeves of his coat and a gold pin with a love knot at the end of the hood. This indicates that he is not religious because instead of the gold pin, he should have a rosary. The monk's favorite pastime is hunting. He is fat, bald, and greasy, with eyes that roll in his head. The monk is another religious character who is corrupt. He wears a small rope necklace with a love knot tied to the end of it. This love knot may suggest that he is a stud with women. The Friar Friar is a not-so-pious religious figure. 
he is described as a limiter means begs on the behalf of the poor he does nothing but corrupt his own church for private gain and in the process destroys the foundations of faith among the people he is supposed to serve Chaucer's portrait of the friar is one of the harshest views of religious corruption in Canterbury Tales. He knows all the bars and is more familiar with barmaids and innkeepers than the lepers or beggars. He sings well and has a decent amount of money. A very strong person physically. His hood or long sleeve of his robe filled with pins for curls. He has pocket knives to give to pretty girls. He wears brand new dresses. Next the merchant. Merchant wears fashionable attire with multicolored cloak. He had forked beard. He is the member of rising middle class. According to Chaucer, the merchant hides being in debt by wearing fancy clothes. The clerk Clark is a philosophy student from Oxford. He is so poor that he can't even afford to feed himself. He is as skinny as a rake. He is not giving importance for money. He prefers to spend it on books rather than food or clothes. The clerk is so serious about his studies. Thoughtful person. Chaucer likes this character because even though He is poor thin and impoverished he is still dedicated to his studies no one suspected he was really heavily in debt the sergeant of law sergeant of law was a lawyer appointed by the monarch to serve as a judge representative of the upper class He rode simply dressed in a coat of mixed weave, gathered with a silk belt with small metal ornaments. He is renowned, knowledgeable person. His legal work is flawless and he has been known to win many cases. His days also include writing contracts, performing in court. He made himself look busier. He took large fees. He knows everything common and crime from William's time. The Franklin Franklin is a large and wealthy landowner who enjoys fine living and good companionship. He had white beard feeling like white daisy. He loved to dip his morning bread in wine. His house never had a shortage of food. According to season he changed his food habits. The word Franklin means free man. He is a member of the nobility. A haberdasher, a carpenter, Dyer and Weaver all dressed in ivory. Their weapons were shaped with silver. They belonged to a tradesman's guild. Next the cook. Cook has a giant open saw on his leg. He is named Roger of Ware. The shipman. Shipman is the quintessential bad boy. He is good at calculating tides, navigating the stars, and bringing the ship safely into the harbor with the best of them he is one of the best traveled pilgrims he is of dartmouth town he wears woolen cloth that reached unto the knee the physician physician is a very learned man he believed in astrology he is a wealthy person most of the educated of all pilgrims he is greedy and a bit boastful the wife of bath wife of bath has traveled all over the world on pilgrimages she has lived with five husbands her dress shows her extravagance she is intelligent rather than intellectual she uses her body as a bargaining tool she is as gap toothed and somewhat deaf she is wearing bright scarlet red stockings Wife of Bath enjoys freedom. She is a skilled weaver. The Parson. Parson is extremely poor, but he is rich in holy thoughts and deeds. The only devout person. He
He is a learned person who taught his parishioners sincerely. He is a hard working personality. He practiced what he preached and preached what he practiced. The person retains his faith in God even in times of adversity. The plowman. Plowman is just as holy and virtuous as his brother the parson. He has to do the dirtiest jobs of the medieval world. He is medieval symbol of the poor. He is athletic and wore a tabard smock and rode a mare. He represents working class. Next the miller. Miller's beard is red and he has a hair covered wart on his nose. The miller is an accomplished piper. He likes jokes and reciting poetry. He is a fit person. He is always the winner at wrestling. He is a drunkard and vulgar person. The miller carries a sword and buckler. His mouth is like a furnace. The reeve. Reeve is a manager of someone's estate or farm. He is also a carpenter. He can estimate the yields of his master's crops and livestock based only on the rainfall from year to year. He wears his hair cut close to his ears like a priest's and wears a cloak that looks like something a friar would wear. He's mounted on a dapple grey horse. He wears a cloak of blue, both signs of his financial success. The summoner. Summoner is presented as a criminal collecting and keeping fines from innocent people. The summoner or apparitor was the officer of the ecclesiastical court of the bishop. Another religious figure who is represented here as hypocrite. His face is pimpled and scaly. He has a round, bright red face covered with pimples, squinty eyes, black eyebrows, and a thin, ragged beard. He had a face that little children feared. Chaucer first describes the summoner as having a cherubin's face. Chaucer uses a slightly mocking tone to describe the summoner. Chaucer mentions that he is a drunkard. He is a church official who was responsible for summoning the sinners before the ecclesiastical courts. Next the pardoner. Pardoner is the most evil of the pilgrims. A pardoner is a person who travels about the countryside selling official church pardons. He admits that he preaches solely to get money, not to correct sin. He would rather take the last penny from a widow and her starving family than give up his money. He is a member of the Roman Catholic Church. The host. Host's real name is Harry Bailey. The host often tries to play the role of peacekeeper among the pilgrims. The host proves himself to be a very good tour guide. He proves himself capable of handling most of the arguments and keeping everyone in line. He is the leader of the group. He is the proprietor of the tabard inn. He creates the game of having each pilgrim tell stories and became the judge of the game. That's all for today. If you find this video informative, please do subscribe our channel and don't forget to click the bell icon to get the notification of our coming videos. Thank you for watching.